Hi, Hi, I got mom. If you go to the penitentiary, man, you gonna get hit. Back in the days, into the village. Before uh, item 18. The village is needed. 14 of those charges occur a life sentence. Because you can't fight. Yeah, because you can't fight. That's all you know how to do is shoot. Fight. But they are not going to where they need to go to get the real solution. So look, I want to touch on a few more things. Um, you said we, we, we. You weren't apprehended of Solo, were you? Oh, no. Uh, when I was arrested, I was arrested with Donald Hudson. Uh, he was 18 years old when his crime happened. And this is another reason why I'm telling youngsters why they should listen to me, right? Uh, Donald Hudson, 18 years old, uh, he had a, uh, like a one-year-old daughter. Uh, that crime, it wasn't even planned. It's just something spontaneous. We didn't decide, okay, we finna go commit a robbery. We was walking down the street and in this neighborhood we kept guns because you had to have a gun out here because there was so much murders and, and crime happening around here, right? So, but this robbery was unplanned. Me and him just happened to see each other and, say, and looked at each other, saw these people and instantly robbed. We didn't even come up with a plan. We didn't even say, let's rob these people. I gave him a look, he gave me a look like, Let's rob. That's just how quick that happened. That one split second decision caused both of us to lose our life. When I say both of us to lose our life, I mean literally, not figuratively. We literally both lost our lives. I, I was given 241 years. Uh, in, in, in 97, in January of 97, uh, like 14 months after the crime happened, uh, I was found guilty and sentenced to 241 years. Four or five months later, he took the plea that they offered. He, he uh, snatched the plea. What, what was that plea? What was that uh, plea? 30 years. So Donald Hudson was given 30 years. And uh, he would have had to do like 23 years or something to get out. When he got to, the, to that 23rd year, well, he'd have had two more years left. Uh, within uh, like a year, a year or so or two years before his release, he was in prison. Uh, and it's, it's a thing in prison where we smoke, uh, dudes smoke K2, right? It's synthetic marijuana. So uh, uh, he was, in, allegedly, they said that he was uh, under the floors of K2 and the guards tried to restrain him. And in the process, he ended up dying, right? So before he was able to be released, he died in prison, right? But not for one second, did neither him or I think that that split second decision to rob those people would cost us our life. I died, I died by being sentenced to a life sentence. He died literally in prison by the guards, however he was restrained, was too rough and he didn't make it out of there and he died in prison. Rest in peace to Donald Hudson. I send my condolences, but we didn't think that that, that, that crime would, would lead to that. Him dying in prison and me being sentenced to, to a death sentence, right? And it's a miracle that I'm sitting right here, right? Uh, we thought that he was getting out and here it is, I happen to get out. So you never know how God worked, but we didn't think that that happened. And that's, that's what I'm telling youngsters about the decisions, right? And in prison, even in prison, you can make decisions, man, that like that. Whoever thought that just because you're in prison getting high, not, not that you literally OD, but the guards and in, in in how you was restrained that you could die in prison, you just high, you know what I'm saying? Join whatever, however people enjoy themselves in prison, and you can end up dying in prison. You know what I'm saying? Nobody thought that he would die in prison, but that one robbery caused him dying in prison. Man, that's what I'm telling youngsters about the decisions that we make. You got to think, man. Rest in peace to uh, Donald. Condolences to his family as well, coming from VLP and the street show. Um, you said something there. Uh, you guys never thought that you, you would take, uh, you would be in prison or get caught. Also, he took a plea deal. Uh, if my research serves me correct, you were offered that same plea deal, correct? Oh yeah, that's another thing, right? When I'm telling youngsters, and my stupidity, right? Uh, Donald Hudson was smart enough to take the plea. Uh, in my stupidity, I felt like uh, uh, the jury, maybe the jury would be easier on me than the judge, right? So even though I know I was guilty of this crime, I didn't plead guilty. Um, which, uh, which I should have. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I don't want to stop you. Yeah. So you did all these crimes. Yeah. You get locked up. Yeah. They offer you a plea grip deal of 30 years. Yeah. And you had how many charges? 18. Yeah, 18 charges. Yeah. All serious stuff. Yeah. Each one, uh, item 18, I would say 
Uh, 14 of those charges occurred a life sentence. Uh, but in my young mind, 30 years is, was like forever to me. 30 years, I couldn't even see two years, that's not on 30. I'm like, 30 years? No, but not realizing the seriousness of what I was facing. I sat down in the in old city jail all that time in the workhouse too, playing, not knowing the seriousness of what I was facing. Like, not, not in my wildest dreams that I think I could be given that type of time, right? Dudes got these type of cases right now today at, at the uh, sit, going to court over here every day. Right now we sitting in front of the city hall, the justice center over here on the left, and on my right is the courthouse where all of us get sentenced at. Guys go right from the justice center and walk back through this uh, thing, this elevator over here, and that's where they go get sentenced at right here. Every day, man, uh, like when I go into juvenile and talk to those youth and teach them writing workshops, Guys got murders and all this, don't even realize the seriousness of what they facing, right? I didn't realize it at that age. It's like, what, the, what they, I mean, they ain't gonna do too much at 10 to 15 at the most. No more of my wildest dreams than me, nobody in the jail, nobody even thought I was gonna get that time. Nobody, not even the jury that recommended 30 years on the robbers. Nobody, the victims, nobody thought I was gonna get that type of time, right? But you never know what your consequence is gonna lead to. It's just like when you take, take uh, when you do something, and not realizing what you did. And then when it's time to take a plea, uh, we don't want to do it because it's like, I can't see, I don't, I can't see being locked up right now. I only can see the streets, but the streets ain't finna be there. And whatever streets that you knew is going to be way different 10 or 15 years down the line. Whatever you knew, everything different. Uh, see, you can, kids never understand that. No school out of all, this, I went to about 15 different schools and only two of them open. Uh, a lot of my childhood homes no longer exist. So everything I knew as a child that I came back to the streets is no longer there. So when you take, when you uh, are committing crime, it's easy to not want to plead guilty because who want to go to jail? But when you're in them type of situations, to take the plea is the best thing in them type of situations like I was because by me going to trial, that's why I was punished more harshly and given 241 years. 241 years. You was given that by a judge. Yeah. A black judge. Yeah. A woman black judge that gave you 241 years. A lot of people, uh, when they found that out, they were shocked by that. Um, I'll be honest, I was even shocked by that. But one thing I was more so shocked by, the judge that gave you 241 years, uh, somewhere down the line, she felt she overcharged you. She felt bad about that. Can we talk about that briefly? Oh uh, yeah, that's uh, that's very were, and never in my wildest dreams I think that she would ever um, come back and say something like that, right? Um, so that that was a shock that a judge would come back and say they made a mistake because in the judicial system, they uh, a lot of times uh, the courts or the system would never admit to to making a mistake, right? And you know, to give a child that type of time is a mistake, right? And for her, when she came back, I was shocked, surprised, right? Uh, but it's the same way as I would want the victims to forgive me. I, uh, it's, it was nothing I felt against her. I forgave her because she a human being. We all human beings to make mistakes, right? So uh, she, uh, right now, I go talk to her. I go see her, go by her house and see her. And uh, I, I don't, it's, it's in the past, right? I was given the time. It was for a purpose. I went in there and changed my life. I don't hold no grudges and uh, see him being like I am. And that's something we went through in life. And uh, I hold her dear now because uh, what she did coming back, it's a worse situation. And she just a, a person who, who uh, realized the mistake and she came back and uh, I thank her for that. And I'm out of sitting free. Why do you think she felt compelled to you know, come back and, you know, have a change of heart. She she actually, uh, we didn't mention, but she was actually a, uh, one of the big advocates for your release. Uh, um, as she was saying in her previous media interviews, she realized that she sent as a child and she treated him like a grown man. And uh, she had over the years, not when I was sentenced, they didn't know nothing about the juvenile brain science back in the 90s when I was sentenced. Over time, by being a judge, she came to information about uh, youth brains not fully developing and that uh, they make irrational choices. As the U.S. Supreme Court pointed out in Graham versus Florida, 
Miller versus uh, Alabama and Montgomery, Montgomery versus Louisiana, they found out about juvenile brain development and uh, how these kids are not fully uh, developed and you can't sentence them as an adult because kids make a rational decision. I was a child, no matter how you look at it, I was 16 years old, I was a child. No, no ifs, ands, or buts. A 16 year old is still a child. But in my mind, I thought I was an adult and I, I acted a certain way in her courtroom and she felt like, okay, this got her is somebody that needed to be threw away. And 23 years later, she came back and said, okay, let me look into this. And she saw who I was, the person I had became and changed. And she led the efforts uh, going to the state rep state capitol, talking to a lot of representatives. She was, uh, in, led the effort along with the ACLU and uh, lobbyists. And they uh, was able to get with the lawmakers. Nick Shore, uh, I think Nick Shore, Republican out of uh, St. Charles County, who spearheaded the bill the effort to get me out, and that's how that uh, bill, Senate Bill 26 was passed, and that's how I sit. So she came back, she said she made a mistake, and and the courts, not the courts, the legislator uh, gave juveniles a way to get out, and uh, several juveniles that didn't have a chance, now had to change their life, have a chance to get out. Because when the law changed, it, it wasn't a get out of free jail court. The pro board, it ain't no get out of uh, free jail court. You had to prove that you changed prove that you went in prison trying to rehabilitate yourself, did, took advantage of every opportunity they had for rehabilitation, and I had did that, and they gave me a year out date based on my behavior in prison and my actions to showing that I, I have changed and I wanted to get out and do something different with my life. Wow, man. That's amazing. I'm, I'm not gonna lie because uh, we use a term called lost in the system. Technically, you supposed to be lost in the system, or maybe you're not. But generally, I personally have never heard of a judge going back and advocating for somebody that they sentence. And maybe it happens, but this is my first time hearing about it. I never heard of it either. So you got a lot of years and you had a lot of time in prison. 